Hey hoes. I know I've been missing for a minute. Been working on a lot of shit. But anyway, welcome to Storytime with Chrissy. Now, I'm going to start a new series called So Bitch, You Not Go Believe This. Now, these are going to be tales that may or may not be true. So, just in case names have been changed to protect all parties involved. Now, you may be wondering, what was the motivation behind such a title? Well, I'll tell you. Lately here, there has been an epidemic of fuckboydom. Don't know where it came from, but it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Our first tale today is called Going Up on a Tuesday. So, here we go. This story takes place in about, mm, let me say 2000, 2001. Between two little lovebirds named Monica and Mason. Now, Mason was the typical, what you call, playboy. He could sing dance all the girls wanted him he had pretty eyes i mean just everything okay and monica she was cute she you know what i'm saying she was talented and all that good stuff so why not anyway monica and mason end up crossing paths one day at a camp this is the summertime kind of love you know what i'm saying puppy love type of thing in summertime you know they both end up going to this little sleepaway camp. You know, parents, they don't want your children to be at home while you're at work during the summertime out there being a thot. So they ship you off to camp. So when Monica saw Mason, baby, when I tell you, have you, do y'all remember the Looney Tune cartoons or what it was where it's like, whoop, 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 with the hard eyes, yeah. That's how she felt. When she saw him, baby, she was just like, oh, my God. Like, this is the most beautiful thing I ever seen in my life. Excuse me, excuse me. Don't worry about what's in my cup. But anyway, but she, you know, my, Monica was shy. She was like, I'm not going to even pay attention to him. None of that. All the girls like him. I'm not about to. Mm -mm, I'm going to just stay over here. So that's what she did. For like mm, a week or two. So then one day, she called Mason looking at her. And she was like, is it me? And he like, yeah, you. Could it be then who? Anyway, moving right along, he ended up asking Monica for her number. They start talking on the phone and it was all cute and sweet and all, you know, you hang up, no, you hang up, you sleep, no, you sleep, all that type of shit. So things started getting like pretty intense, you know what I'm saying, with Monica and Mason or whatever, and the kissing and all that stuff and the fondling and stuff. And it got to a point where Mason wanted to get in their panty drawers. Now, Mason wasn't a virgin, even though he was 13. He wasn't a virgin. But Monica was, very much so. But she loved Mason. So she was considering, you know, should she do it, should she not? But she was just scared. She was a good, you know, she was a good girl. You know what I'm saying? She was just like, no, I can't, I can't. You know, I can't do that. So anyway, summer came to an end. And... They were going to different schools, and it just seemed like things were just going in a different direction. So, they decided to end as friends. And when I tell you that crush pulled in Monica heart, because she really loved Mason. And she thought Mason really loved her. Keep in mind, y'all, they 13. You don't know what no love is and no fucking 13. But anyway, whatever. So, you know, they stayed, you know, friends. You know, no big deal. So, then... Lo and behold, how shit work out, you know. Monica ends up taking a class with one of his friends. And at first, she kind of was wondering, 
why his friend was so interested in talking to her. Like, what was his, you know what I'm saying? Because he was asking her a lot of questions about her and Mason and when last time they saw each other and, you know, are they still together and what happened and all this stuff like that. So she kind of like, you know, what is this, Inspector Gadget? What's all these questions? But anyway, he was a nice guy. So she was just like, whatever. He's just curious minds want to know. So one day, he asked for her number. And she was like, Burp? No, you know, I can't give you my number. You're Mason's friend. And so he was like, no, 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 not like that. But I do think you're pretty. But anyway, he was like, that's not the reason why I want your number. He was like, I know something about Mason. You don't know. And I need to tell you on the phone. It's not really something I can tell you right now. More like something I need to show you. So, I'm going to call you later. And this might hurt your feelings, but I think you need to know. So, Monica is like freaking out at this point. She like, what could he possibly be having to tell her about Mason? Like, what is there to tell? So, anyway, she get home. And she's waiting for the call. Like, she on pans and needles. Like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, what is this? And what is he going to say? Is he going to lie to Mason and say that, you know, I, she gave her number? You know, wh whatever. She was worried. But anyway, the phone rang. And her heart is beating. And it's Mason's friend. And he like, okay, this is what's about to happen. I'm about to call Mason on freeway. Whatever you do. Don't say a word. Whatever you hear, don't say a word. So, at this point, she like, well, okay, I guess so. But what could he possibly have to say? So, he calls Mason. Come back to the line with Mason. And they're just talking, you know, shooting the shit. Hey, what's up? You know, da 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 And so, she's like, oh my God, I'm not about to sit up here and listen to boys on the phone. So before she can hang up, Mason's friend brings up her name. And he like, hey, you remember that girl, Monica? You used to date? He like, yeah, 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 I know Monica. And he was like, yeah, you know, she real cool and everything. So he was like, hmm, well, when was the last time you talked to her? So this is the part that really gets you. Keep in mind, I said Monica was a virgin. So Mason proceeds to say, oh, Monica, <laughs> I'm fucking her Tuesday. When I tell you, Monica heart dropped down to her ass, couldn't even shake it fast. So she was sitting on the phone kind of wondering, why in the hell would he say something like that? Well, here's a little tidbit of the story that we kind of left out. Like I said. Monica and Mason were still friends. They still talk. Monica still had feelings for Mason. She kind of felt like the reason why they broke up was because she wasn't ready to give up her virginity. So, in the back of her mind, she felt like since she loved him so much, the least she could do was allow him to deflower her. So they had set up a meeting for the following Tuesday to make this happen, Captain. Well, when Monica heard this, her whole world crushed. Because she was like, what the hell? Is that all he could possibly see her as? Is a piece of booty? Another notch on his funky ass belt? Hmm. Well, it was real hard for Monica not to say nothing at this point. Because basically he had put her out there like she was some kind of funky hoe. So, it took a minute. But she got her mind right, and she let his ass have it. Needless to say, their friendship was over, and they never spoke again. So, the moral of the story is... Fuck these niggas. Until next time. Bye, hoes.